Hey everybody, Isaiah here at Sofo Survival. In this video, I'm super excited to set up the Roman Home Nomad five window tent. So this is what you get with the whole kit. Okay, you've got the cylinder stove. This is the Packer stove. You've got the tent skin. And then in this bag, you've got the poles and the hardware and all of that stuff. All right, guys, so this is the way it works. What's cool about these bags too, so a lot of times you buy a tent and you can never get the dang thing back in the bag, right? So what I love about the way these guys designed these bags is that they're they're dynamic. You can, you can unpack it and everything and if you don't get it perfectly rolled back up the way that the factory did it, you just kind of do it your, your own way, you're still gonna be able to fit it in here because these are adjustable and uh, and you can, it's got extra material in the bag itself and then the straps are adjustable, which is kind of sweet. Okay, so Kim here, he's got the bag, the, um, the tent skin itself. You can see how it's rolled up there. I'm pulling this one apart. This has got the floor in it. There's your setup instructions. This is your mesh floor. And we'll talk about that more in just a minute. It's all rolled up nice and neat. Okay, you've got your ropes. Um, that's the coaster for the center pole and then your floor <laughs> this is super cool you get everything that you need with this kit guys check this out you get a, a nice quality milwaukee hammer and then inside here these are all your tent stakes i'm gonna sit those over here and then we keep going and you've got all your poles Okay guys, so I just wanna show you this real quick. So in the instruction manual, which is fantastic by the way, it takes you through, gives you a nice little intro here, talks about care and tent storage and getting familiar with it, talks about the um, canvas shrinking, all that stuff. And then you go through and you get a picture of the parts bag um, or all the parts and it's awesome because as you can see here, they're, the poles are all color coded and, uh, and it is as exactly as it says there. And then you get all this other stuff that we kind of mentioned already, your ropes, your bag and your hammer and your stakes and your mesh floor and, and all of that stuff. It's really awesome. You flip the page and then you get the full setup instructions. It gives you the layout and it just walks you through step by step. These are by far the best instructions I have seen on a tent like this. I've had several canvas tents, wall tents, and uh, none of them have been even close to this descriptive. So it makes it really easy. There's your diagram of all your different poles, color coding, and then based on the color of the poles, here's your diagram, how you're gonna lay this thing out. And uh, it just makes the whole setup. There's, there's no guesswork in any of this. As long as you can follow some instructions, um, you'll be able to do it super easy. Okay. The instructions say, and by the way, I have not set this tent up before. This is cold. We haven't rehearsed this at all. We just, we wanted it to be authentic for the video and just show you exactly. So we're gonna go through and make whatever mistakes we're gonna make and, and then talk about it afterwards, okay? So step one, uh, select your tent site large enough for the tent. You're gonna need about 25 feet by 30 feet, um, including the ropes and and everything is staked down properly. Um, first step, position the tent floor where desired with floor straps on the underside. And then we're gonna position the tent at the front edge of the floor. So we already kind of messed that up. We, <laughs> we did the classic, uh, pull the tent out first. Uh, really what you're supposed to do is take the skin, lay that out and then put the tent on it, roll it out and, and do that in that order. So let's do it. So we're gonna unfold the tent so that it's covering the floor. And then we're gonna stake out the bottom, um, this is the curb corners of the tent, uh, to the floor, or to the tent and the floor straps. So we're attaching this together. 
while pulling moderate tension between the corners. And then leave about four inches of the spike showing. All right, I'm gonna come over there and see what you're doing. Go to that corner, show me what you just did. Okay, so put the pole right on that tent stake. And then the top corner lines up. Goes right on there to tension. Okay, and then we'll stake those babies in. Okay, so the next uh, next section here, now that we've gotten the four, por four corner poles, um, we're gonna do this peak pole, the center pole, and we're gonna use this grommet to sit on the bottom, this, or the coaster, sorry, to put it underneath here so it doesn't dig down in and puncture through the floor and, and sink. So we unzip the front, and then this is just gonna go right up in there. We're gonna put it right in the, the, the peak of the tent. Boom! That is so easy. So we're doing this two people, but as you can see, each you don't have to like one person doesn't have to hold it up while the other person does it. You could do this one person, but it's you know obviously with two people it's a little easier and, and goes a little quicker. So that's why I love this is other other tents that I've set up. It is nearly impossible to do by yourself, and this just makes it so easy and simple. Okay, so we're gonna do the remaining wall poles now. UT, check that out, isn't that sweet? They just interlock there. We'll stick those in about a 45 degree angle. Okay, so tension all ropes in a balanced manner. So as obviously you can tell that the thing is all skewed and skawampus. So we'll just go through and, and tighten it up so that it's nice and even. First of all, look how freaking awesome this is. So much room. It's just awesome. All right, guys, so let me mention a few benefits um, and features of the tent here. Uh, everything, all the corners and the top, everything is reinforced, okay? You've got the top that's like ultra reinforced where the top goes so you're not gonna, that, that top pole is not gonna go puncturing through there even with all the tension and everything on it. The corners, you can see how that's reinforced as well, as well as little uh, gear loops on there. <coughs> And then um, we mentioned this is the five window version. There's a three window version as well. 
But even with these windows open right now, I can already feel this breeze coming through here. It's awesome. So like on a hot day, that breeze is gonna be really important. This mesh floor is awesome. So the purpose of this is, um, I've, you can see my, my muck boots on here. Say we're in a, a muddy, wet day outside and we're tracking all kinds of stuff in here. Well, if you have the, the dirt and the mud and the water, it can escape and go down, fall through this mesh floor. If you wanted to have a tarp underneath it, you totally can just lay out whatever uh, heavy duty tarp you want underneath there. And then you get uh, a little bit more water protection. That's it. There is an al also an optional uh, screen door that we've got. We'll put that on here in just a minute. All right, so that's the end of the tent setup. It was super easy. Like we uh, talked about, you can actually, you could do this so easily with just one person. Two people, obviously better um, and quicker, but we were, I mean, with all the messing around with the camera and everything, we were a little over 35 minutes. So, um, I mean, minus trying to figure out a camera and all that stuff, I mean, you could do this pretty quick. And that was our first time. We had never done this before. We had read through the instructions, but that was it. Um, that brings another thing. Just do yourself a favor and read the instructions, follow them. Um, you'll, you'll save yourself some, some uh, you know, having to back up and redo things, but the instructions are fantastic. Pictures and descriptions on everything. It's really, really great. Okay, so that's it. That's the tent itself. We will uh, we'll go through and we'll show you how the stove works. Okay guys, so like we mentioned, this is the cylinder stove um, packer tent, or packer stove. And uh, I'm just gonna unbox this thing or unpackage it with you. This is just a little locking mechanism, so your little door can close and lock and won't swing open on you. But this is awesome. Okay, so your chimney pipe, it's all nested together and you've got your little spark arrestor built into it right there. So we'll take that out. We've got the four legs. And then this particular, the way this one comes is with these two side plates that, that go onto the stove. There's also options for, um, for a water uh, container that goes on the side here with a spigot and everything so you can boil your water, but that's what this one comes with. There's also a couple other accessories. You can get a grate to put in there, but this particular package uh, comes like this. If you want uh, to do a different size stove, this is the Packer, it works really great for this size tent. We have about four other sizes that are options as well. I wouldn't go any smaller than this on this tent. Um, you also don't need to go up to the big old like Yukon size because that's a little overkill for this tent, but um, maybe this one or the next one up, which is the Hunter would be fantastic. Um, stoves for this particular setup. So let's throw these legs on here. I love how everything just nests together. And um, another thing about this stove is that it's it's made out of really thick, good quality steel. They they uh, coat it with a high temperature paint, so it's just nice and durable. Nice heavy gauge steel, so it's not going to warp and cause problems on you. Okay, so that's it for the stove itself. Now this thing does have, this is brand new, and it does have about a one hour curing time. So we're gonna, we're gonna light a fire in here, let it go for about an hour. If you do it outside, you don't have to worry about the smoke and stuff. Uh, if you do it inside, it's gonna smoke and fill the tent up a little bit. So you just wanna let that air out and, uh, and clear out before you, you start moving in and sit in the tent with it. All of that instructions, all that stuff is right here in this manual, which is really sweet. All right, so we're gonna assemble this smallest end down. So that's your number one piece, the number two. They're all labeled here. You're gonna take that crimped end and you're just gonna slide it into the next, okay? So there's number three. I'm gonna position this about right here. Okay, so um, that way our chimney is right over the top of this when we put that in there. This is gonna be my little cooking area right here. And then, uh, and then I can have a cot or bed over there along these two sides and over here. And it gives me plenty of space around the stove here. Next, what we gotta do is we gotta remove that stove jack up there and it's kind of nice because <laughs> they thought about this. We've got this rope and basically 
you're just gonna pull that. It's Velcroed on there and we just, we drop it down. I'm not gonna pull it all the way off right now, but you expose that stove jack. So, the end of my chimney goes right through there. Push it up through. Just uh, adjust that stove so that you can drop this chimney down in there. It nests right down in there. Uh, the kit also comes with this little pull hook. And you can just snap that on there for whatever accessories you might have. And that's it, let's start us a fire. Okay, if I can get a spark, it took one spark and I've got my lint lit right there, okay? Dryer lint's one of the best things you can use. If you want to waterproof it, you can just grab a little bit of Vaseline and, and rub it into that lint, but man, it works really well. Okay, so then as my fire grows, I'm gonna feed it. For a successful fire, you gotta have the three, the three corners of the fire triangle. You gotta have fuel, you gotta have ignition, and you gotta have oxygen. So you gotta make sure this breathes and it's nice because this chimney will allow that air to just get drawn up through this stove inlet air right here. And then also once we close this, you can adjust that airflow. Truth be told, I like to have about 19 different ways of starting a fire, <laughs> well, partly because I'm a pyro, but I love my backups. But a ferro rod is honestly one of the best ways you can literally start hundreds or thousands of fires with one of these things. Um, even this little guy that we sell in the store, I mean, it's it's uh, three inches long and about a quarter inch wide, but you can you can start so many fires with that thing. And you saw how easy that one spark right on that lint, and you're good to go. Okay, guys, while we're letting that cure, and by the way, you can see, uh, take a look at this. You can see the stove smoking while it sits there and cures. And, and you can smell it and breathe. It's, it's probably not great for us to be sitting in here breathing this So you want to just kind of clear it out and let it do its thing Let it get nice and hot for about an hour and then it's done then you can come in and occupy but I'm gonna actually go Through and show you we're gonna come outside. There's some other optional accessories. This is the screen door There's also a couple of these little things. There's a uh, little gear holders There's another one that you can hang up like right over here that will hold is bigger it's about three feet wide It'll hold like your your camping or your your cooking utensils whatever gear you might have but let's step outside here and we'll put on this screen door i am not very tall but basically what's cool about this is this whole thing just velcros right in here it's not velcros over to the inside of this velcro down the walls here and then check this out this is magnetic which is nice and slick so i can just Pull this open, and then when I let go, I tighten it a little too much. It will just snap back together like that, nice and easy. If I adjust this where it's just right, give it a little bit of slack. Pull that open, and then boom, boom, boom. It will just reattach to itself. And then boom, I can keep all the bugs out. And let that airflow go. So I'm, it's a, it's a spring morning. Uh, it's not real cold out here, but man, just that little stove in there with a the little fire in there, man, it's, it's got some serious heat. I mean, a lot of you guys watching this video, you've, you've uh, been in, in canvas tents before with stoves. It's awesome. I mean, you can be, it can be zero degrees outside or below and you'll be in there sleeping in your underwear. It's great. But the reason why I love the way this is set up, this tent, is the stove is in the middle. A lot of times with, with canvas tents you'll have the stove over in the corner or on one side of the tent and then those people are nice and toasty and probably too hot when you stoke that fire at night and then the other people on the other side of the tent are freezing their butts off and uh, the way this works is kind of like the sun at the center of a solar system it warms everything evenly so that's why they purposely put the stove in the middle and then you can sleep on the outer edges come in here and i'll show you another thing yeah like it's like nine over nine foot ceiling up there. Obviously right here in the middle, 
is plenty tall. Um, the, the walls are a little bit shorter. I'm a short guy, I'm only 5'7", um, and I'm gonna hit my head if I try to come all the way back here, but well, I'm gonna have my cots here. And so if I'm sitting or uh, you know on the edge of my cot or sleeping, I mean, I've still got tons of room overhead and I'm not gonna be bothered by the little bit lower sidewalls. Um, also, it helps when, when you've got snow and rain, it can, it can slough off the tent. Um, and something about this, about the weight and the load bearing capabilities of this tent, it will definitely hold quite a bit of snow. Off the top of my head, I don't know the exact rating and what they claim, but um, if you're in a really, really heavier sustained uh, snowstorm and you've got snow accumulating, I mean, you're probably still gonna have to kinda try to shake the snow off and let it fall. You're, this is not a leave, leave up all winter and let several feet of snow gather on it. Uh, it just doesn't have the capacity for that being that it doesn't have a, a rigid internal frame but it will hold a lot of snow. And then the water, what's kind of cool, the way that this is that this is designed is the water will drip off, okay? And if you come over here, yeah, again, you can see everything's nice and reinforced, but it will drip off. These walls are actually angled out slightly. So you're gonna drip and actually miss the tent. So it's not gonna sit there and run down the side of this tent the whole way down. Um, you do see over here above the windows, just the way that they needed to design this. They wanted that water so that it didn't pool and puddle up right here. They did sew this little piece and it will kind of run down this, but it won't like run inside and get you all soaked. It, it tends to just kind of run off and slough off the side of the tent. So those are the only parts where you might have a little bit of water coming down, but it'll just, it'll just come off the outside of the tent. Another cool feature I love, you see artwork here, the bison, I have a love for, for buffalo. I just, oh man, I love it. The buffalo skull is one, the one that I chose, but there's several different artwork options. So talk to us about that. We have, there's elk, there's uh, mule deer, there's like kind of an elk scene, a pack horse scene, um, the bison, a couple other options. We're actually gonna probably do an option where we have the SoFo survival logo right there as well, the flame. And then of course you got the romanhome.com logo over there. That, that stays on all the tents, but um, all in all, guys, we are super happy with this tent. We love it and can't wait to spend some time in this. Okay, guys, while we wish we could stay out here for weeks in this thing, um, we're gonna take you through the whole uh, takedown and pack up process. Okay guys, so first things first, you wanna let the, the chimney and the stove cool, uh, you wanna let the chimney and the stove cool down completely. It's almost all the way cool, so I'm gonna take it out and just set it on the ground, let it cool completely while we finish the rest of the takedown. Okay guys, so again, uh, follow the instructions on the manual. Um, what we're gonna do is we're basically I won't walk you through every single step-by-step. Step. You can watch the time-lapse and watch us as we do this, but we're gonna take down that center pole. We're gonna zip up all the windows, close those up. The instructions say to leave the door open and unzip for now to let the air escape. And then uh, we'll slowly start taking out the poles. We'll take off this front and, uh, and the sides. And then, um, and then we'll zip up the door and then we'll, uh, we'll talk to you again in just a minute. Guys, next I'm gonna put the chimney um, cover back on there, and I want to have uh, just to note for next time I want to have the top, the rope towards the top or the tip of the tent, so.
so that um, when I need to pull it off the next time it comes off top to bottom. Now that the air's all out of it, we're gonna zip this up. Zip up the doors. And then there's these neat, nifty little straps right here. I'm gonna snap those so that it protects the, the zipper from too much tension when we set it up next time. Okay guys, and then according to the instructions, we're just gonna take the corners here, we're gonna pull it tight against, we're gonna leave the stakes in, pull it tight against there, and then we can fold it back this direction. Okay, and then we're gonna do that same thing, front, take out all the tension, the wrinkles with this. So I'm gonna kind of stretch, stretch it like this. Pull towards the back, yeah. And take that extra tension out. Walk around a little circle without pulling all the corners in. And then just lay that flat right there towards the back. Okay, we'll pull out the remaining spikes. Don't lose your tent spikes. Okay, and this is cool. The next uh, step, we're gonna actually use the grommets as our guides. We're gonna fold in one, two, three from that side, and then we'll go fold in one, two, three from the right side, and then we're gonna roll it back to front. Roll it up nice and neat. long ways like this so they don't get tangled up okay back to the part about never being able to fit a tent back in the bag or a chair or whatever it is this is so cool so check this out the tent goes right back in there they overbuilt the bag. Fits in there super easy. I mean, I was fairly neat when I rolled that up, but I wasn't like overly particular about it. But check this out, it's so cool. Fold it up like this. Nice and neat. Okay, we're gonna roll this up similarly. handle done okay we'll take down the stove next thing what we'll do is we'll just take these apart one piece at a time and then we'll nest them smallest to biggest All right, guys, that is it. We, uh, we love this thing. We were super impressed. We had a blast. We wish we could stay out here for weeks in this thing, but, but man, super easy setup, super easy takedown from start to finish, even with m messing with the camera and everything. It took us about 20, 25 minutes to take down. Um, very, very easy. And you guys saw how these bags work. That's, I mean, as cool as the tent is, that's actually one of my favorite parts. It's 
really, really easy to fold up, pack up, and it goes in these bags nice and easy. So um, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, we, uh, we appreciate you watching. Please feel free to leave comments. Um, shoot us a, a, you know, shoot us a, an email, give us a call. Sophosurvival.com is our website. This tent is available on our website. You can also come into our store in Spanish Fork, Utah and get it. Oh, another note about canvas. You wanna make sure that you have it completely dry when you put it away. If it's wet, then um, it can mildew and eventually it will mold and rot in there. It's just not good. So if it's wet when you're taking it down, uh, you take it down and put it away wet if you have to, but then take it home and weather permitting, it's dry, set it up in your backyard, let it dry completely and then um, you know clean it off and, and roll it back up, put it back away. But this thing will last you for years and years and years. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Hey everybody, Isaiah here at Sofo Survival. In this video, we're gonna. Sh <laughs> See, when I do it live, it's so much easier. Sure, for sure, sure. It's, it's, Start it it's, one more it's time. Live, man. You're, you're good. Hey everybody, Isaiah here at Sofo Survival. In this video, we are gonna be taking you. Yeah, you can just keep it rolling, I guess. Okay. Hey everybody, Isaiah here at Sofo Survival. I'm really excited. In this video, we're gonna do the setup, 